What's going on guys, Matt Kelly here and welcome to another installment of the Matt Kelly Fishing uh, YouTube channel. Now, this one here is a bit of a throwback. We're going back five years. This is the first ever boat restoration I did. So settle in, enjoy it. Um, updated all the music with some sick lo-fi beats to just cruise through. Um, it's a long one, but if you're into the, into the boat resto space, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, roll the intro, let's get into it. Hey guys, what is going on? Pretty interesting day today. Um, yesterday morning I was on Facebook and I saw in one of the Facebook groups that I'm part of that someone was selling a boat. And I was like, that boat is interesting. I could work on that boat. So about 10 emails later, I uh, just got home from going and checking it out. And I am now the proud owner of this small little um, fiberglass, well, they call it a speed boat. I don't know if it's actually a speed boat, but it's like a, a fiberglass dinghy. It's gonna require quite a lot of work. Look, feels structurally pretty good, so I'm happy. <laughs> This is what happens when you have to remove hundreds of rivets at once. Not cool. That's actually like a weapon. I can remove the paint with that actually. That is bad form. As I'm pulling, can't come down. As I'm pulling, you can see it's pulling off these chunks of fiberglass. It's pulling out these big chunks here and leaving them inside the rubber where it's been. There it is there. I can get that out. So that would have been attached there. This has been slid along it the whole way around the boat. I think this is original, so it's probably 25, maybe 30 years old. Maybe more. Alright, so we've begun the arduous task of removing all the old glue that was attaching the the old um, the old rubber to both pieces of the hull. Maybe move around this side so you don't die. I think that's going to be pretty good. Look at that. Quick status update. We're about an hour later. Got almost all of the glue off here. It's actually very smooth in some of the areas, which is nice. Um, where it's not, it's mostly fiberglass. So you can sort of see where it's been a, been a hard job. So mostly smooth this full half, which is nice. And then on this side, Ah, uh, yeah, there's still plenty more to go. Um, probably another hour to get that totally cleaned up, which, which will be good when that's done. Um, took a break while the batteries on the, on the uh, drill are charging, and thought I would remove this, this ply plate, see if there's anything scary under that. It's had a few different engines on it. There's quite a few holes there. Uh, it actually looks... It looks quite solid. I 
have to go get a hammer and a few little knocks and see what's going on, but it doesn't feel bad at all, surprisingly. They've filled these other holes, so that's positive. Um, yeah, keep playing, time will tell. old seats have been removed, the bulk of the seats have been removed. I've got to now, um, I've got to now try and work out how to get off these edges. starting to look like so it's, it is coming off quite well um, that one there I have a, that one there's literally just been cut there's no sanding done to that one but um it's working pretty well it's working pretty well that one there's looking pretty good as well so when they're filled and sanded back I think it'll come together quite nicely so yeah now to fill some of these little holes then sand back some of these holes you can see I've done a couple of them already that is very smooth which is nice same on this side wouldn't even if you weren't looking at it you wouldn't even notice that there was a, a hole there so I'm um, still gonna tidy up these ones up here tidy up those to fill this one but it's coming together so what I'm doing here is because these holes were way too big for me to um, to fill just by jamming putty in them I've literally got a, a small uh, little piece of little piece of off cut I've coated it so that it's waterproof and watertight I've put a bit of glue on the end of it and a bit of masking tape around that and I've literally just slotted it inside the hole and then I'm pulling it up while the glue sets now what that means is the glue starting to set now I can now let go of that bit of masking tape and what that's essentially gonna mean is yeah I'm just pulling that that feels very solid so um I can now cut that masking tape off and um, and fill directly over the hole. And um, I've now got something there to brace the inside of the hole that looks like that. Which means you're not burning too much too much filler and um, and you can have a nice solid piece on the inside to, to hold it together. And that I don't know if you can see it. It's a, there was a big, big crack there. It's very nicely filled. So once that's got primer over it and we've sanded that back, you won't even know that was there. Very good. Let's try and do this corner piece. That edge there's not too bad. Might need a little bit of tidying up, but it looks pretty good. Thought I would share another tip that most people um, forget when they do things like um, like work on a little project is um, you know as I remove things like 
this screw, I want to remember when I'm putting it all back together where different screws came from, what different parts were used for. Um, and when there's quite a few parts, you start to forget. So I've got this little process that I like. I just get these little Ziploc bags, write on the front of them what's in them, and it, keep, it keeps it really easy down the track when you need to know, you know, oh man, what kind of kind of self-tapping screw was I using to attach the sounder? And um, I can literally grab that and I can get new ones or I can um, or I can use the ones that I had if they're still good. But, um, but it's a process that I use and I, I do it with everything. I just try to label everything, keep it organized because when it comes to putting it all back together, I think it makes life a lot easier. It's looking like a very different boat now from when we started and it's only going to look more different in the next few days. Alright, so I wanted to jump in here. Now we're moving into the fit out start of this process. And um, a few disclaimers. I've actually restored a bunch of boats since this video. You'll see them all on my channel. Um, video boats where we've done uh, complete legitimate structural restorations like full transom, full stringers, full floor, full fiberglassing, literally taking a boat from an outer shell and building it out. That's not what we did in this case. In this case, because the boat was structurally sound, what, um, what we did was we went, let's just build the shell. Now, there's a few things I would do differently today. In fact, there's probably a lot of things I'd do differently today, but the biggest one is, I think we did a pretty good job of sealing the timber, but if I had my time again, would have used different wood. Would have used either hardwoods and, like we use marine ply, but properly sealed ply. Um, or probably what would be better if I was doing it again is using a Kusa or a King Starboard, something more of a composite material, just so you're not gonna get the likelihood of a rot in the future. Because I think while this, the materials that I use um, a fit for purpose for a period of time, it's probably not what you want to be using if you're doing a boat that you want to last for 10 plus years. In fact, if it gets properly wet, the, the materials we used would almost certainly rot. So big disclaimer before we get into it, um, I'm pretty proud of how it comes out, but you'll, uh, many of you I know are going to say wrong material, wrong material, wrong, and, I, and I definitely know that now, as you'll see in my other videos, we've definitely catered for that. So um, just wanted to jump in with that. Um, almost certainly wood is still fine as long as you're, you're sealing it properly, but um, use the right materials.
All right, so we're now moving into paint. Now in this case, I'm using a, it's a marine paint, but it's actually a, a water-based two-pack. I'd never really used it before, but I had heard of it. It's called Boat Coat. I bought it from a place called Boatcraft Pacific. Um, actually a really good product, went on really nicely. I, as you'll see in the video, I use a roll and tip methodology of getting on the boat, didn't have the room for spraying, and, and frankly didn't have the material, the, the, the equipment or the skills to spray. So learnt the roll and tip method, which worked very, very well. Um, however, as many of you will see, the undercoat goes on very transparent. So while I do quite a thick layer, you can really see through it until you get quite a few coats on there. So something to look out for. End to another weekend. I'm not super stoked with the, the primer. It wasn't as thick, as, as high fill as I had hoped. So um, after we call it two coats, it was really what I feel like was one and a half. Um, you still see a lot of color through it. Um, we're gonna be one or two more coats of primer before we're done, and then we go into paint. Sandpapering. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. There's a few ridges in there from where the undercoat was a bit thick, but it's at the point now where it's like it may not be uh, the perfect finish, but it's going to be as good as I'm as I'm happy with. So you can see here, there's um, quite a lot of quite a lot of markings where we've we've brought it right back to to that that high fill primer, and then even some areas where we've got through that. But I feel okay with it. I've just done a bit of a clean up. So now it's time to um, to mask off and, and get some more painting happening. It's all coming together pretty quickly now, which is awesome.
I've just mixed up a little bit more paint, as you can see down here. Um, the goal with that is to just go through and touch up the insides where I couldn't get to with the roller when we did the first coat. It's all going to be under the floor, so it doesn't have to be a particularly good job, but I feel like I should try as well at least cover it, keep it neat, keep it clean, so that when I do eventually pop the floors, it's still in pretty good shape. It's also another layer of just something to seal it all, so that's the goal. I'm going to get painted to all of these little, these little gaps, areas when it's hard to get to with the roller underneath, and, um, and we'll, we'll keep going from there. Ready for coat number three? I thought I'd show you guys how I actually have to mix the paint because there's a, a hardener, like a catalyst, you've got to add drops to the, the paint, mix that up, and that gets rolled on. So I'll show you that now. sit there and cure and dry, I actually went up and picked up the rubber to go around the um, the inside of this rail and I just tried it and I'm really happy with it. It um, it sits on there super nicely. So that's going to run around the full inside and help seal the the outside layer with the inside layer. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a super nice finish. I, I could not be happier with that. It's going to be really, really good. So that's going to go around the edges. Gonna do a quick, quick light sand over this. Do another, another coat or two today, and then um, hopefully get to do a coat on the inside, which I'd be really happy about if I was able to do that. So busy, busy day. Let's keep going. Day, made a lot of progress, did several coats on the top deck, did a couple of coats on the inside, uh, the white and the grey on the floor. I'm really happy with it. I think um, this top deck is almost ready for cleaning up and then um, and then gloss, which is awesome. The inside is pretty close to being done. Um, obviously then floor, carpet and all that stuff, but we're almost ready to get onto the, the, the hull under here, which has been basically untouched since we got it apart from being cleaned. So, See, there's a lot of sort of old name and old retro stickers and whatnot, so they're still gonna come.
right, and um, knowing that I would be out here all weekend trying to get the bottom of the hole finalised, I decided to come out, sand back the, um, the, the that epoxy stuff, the, the, the needle that we put on there last week that's already set over the, the little dings, and then um, want to sand that back and get some epoxy on, particularly along the, the keel here. So you can see here a lot of this is like sort of now sanded back and looks quite good. Um, all the little dings and scratches have now been filled not all of them but the bulk of them for sure so um there was a little, little scratch there and a whole lot of them around the edges I've sort of filled a little divot there so now we're gonna run some um some epoxy particularly along along here where you can see it's worn through and then top coat will hopefully if it sets go on tomorrow which would be great It's like the world's thinnest, like, undercoat, ever. Why isn't it thick? I don't know. It's a water-based two-pack. It's supposed to be... Like, two-pack? Yeah, two-pack. Two <laughs> um, it's supposed to be... It's supposed to be designed for boats. It's actually called Boat Code. It's a... A lot of people talk about using it, but... I just... I don't get why it's so... Why it's so thin. Like, it just... Doesn't thicken up at all. Um, on the plus side, it's still being sticky, by the way. It actually, like, helps with something else. You get a thicker coat on there. Yeah, that's probably true. Like, gripping. So we did we did top coat. Oh, sorry, top coat. We, we did the first layer of base coat this morning. Um, I spent basically all day waiting for it to dry. It's still a little bit, a little bit sticky. But um, I want to get another coat on so we can make progress tomorrow. So that's the objective of this. Alright, second coat down of base. What do you reckon? Looks <laughs> good. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with it. I think a light sand and that should come up pretty nicely. It's rolled on there well. It's actually surprisingly well, really. Little, like, very little marks, but all in all, I think it'll be fine little tiny ripples. So it's the following morning. I um, I looked at the, the two coats of undercoat hardened overnight. Super hard now which is great um, but now it's time to sand. Half the boat sanded, still got to do the transom and the entire other side. Like we've been about, I'll check the time here. It's been a good couple of hours, probably uh, over, over two and a half hours. So it takes a long time, but I think um, I think it'll get us a better result. So that's definitely worthwhile. So now we're ready for top coat. Um, it's going to be a clean up and wait for sailing to get here and then it's game on. Just finished the tip and roll process for the, or the roll and tip press I should say, for the um, two coats. It's looking really good at this stage. Got um. Got to do a bit of sanding and get another another coat or two on there, but I'm I'm happy with how it's coming together. It looks really good. Thank you. 
clear coat later and this is what it's looking like. Looks really good. Shiny, gloss, nice thick coat. Time to get it flipped over. Just finished two coats of clear coat on that top deck and it's come together pretty well actually. Um, glossy, it's starting to dry nice and um, smooth. So we're getting to the tail end of the project. It's, it's getting close. We are currently installing the LED strip lighting, which is going well, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs>
and all those wires will be hidden away very shortly.
And there you have it. If you got this far, congratulations. This has been a very long video, but you've seen the full project, the complete restoration of this, this epic little, um, little fiberglass runabout. Really fun boat um, with a 25, it just was packed with power. Um, rode much smoother than a tinny wood in the water. I'm super happy with how it came out. Really, really nice boat. Um, obviously, there's a lot I would do differently if I had my time over. I, de I definitely would have, um, would have used probably some different materials and really sealed it down um, even better than we did. We did definitely seal the timber, but I would have probably given glass some of it tried to get the weight down a bit it was a heavy boat uh, that's something that I would definitely keep in mind going back and having my time again was um, the timber makes it heavy um, we could definitely have gone lighter with that and I think it would have come out um, potentially better um, it rode nicely so I think the weight definitely helped with that um, but at the end of the day the, the boat worked um, you know I'm not sure the, the wood's gonna last 50 years I think you're easily gonna get 10 years out of it and for a boat that's already 30 to 40 years old that makes sense to me um, Yes, it might be 50 kilos heavier than it needs to be, but that's, I don't know, the, the, the cost of learning, the cost of going through the process. So, so as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to see a full structural rebuild of a boat, of a similar boat to this, um, I've actually just done a complete rebuild in the last couple of years. Uh, that boat was one where we did stringers, transom, uh, floor, complete glassing, um, the entire project. So if you want to see that um, and you want to do a project yourself, that's probably a better example of the steps to go through and the equipment to use. I've learned a lot in the last few years. Um, so while this was a really, really good experience and a really cool boat, um, would definitely do it differently uh, if I had my time again. But like I say, boats are made to be to played with, to modified, to be used. If you're not having fun with it, then what's the point? So that, and that's what this one was. It was a lot of fun and a lot of learning, which was really cool. Um, if you like this video, please do leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Smash the like button, hit subscribe, do all that cool stuff. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. Cheers guys, and I'll see you later.